Hey guys, two solutions. All right, Th thank you. You're welcome to today's show. Here we fix things. Let me go straight to it and introduce you to my power packed panel. I'm going to start with the lady on my right. So, my name is Isi Ansa, and I run a firm called Access Human Capital. We do recruitment, training, and general advisory in HR. All right, thank you very much, Isi. And the next to Isi is my main man. For those who don't know you, tell us who you are. My name is Eko Mensa. I am the manager for the Premium Bank Help Station and also the CEO for the African Network of Entrepreneurs, TANU. You know my passion? To help you and your business to succeed. Fantastic. And last but definitely not the least, the other lady in the panel. Thank you, Kafi. My name is Nana Santua Afajinu. I'm the executive director of the West Africa Civil Society Institute. It's a capacity development institute for civil society organizations in the sub-region. Thank you very much. You know what to do. Plug in, share, like, comment, give us feedback. It's very necessary to the success of the Solutions Review Show. Now to uh, my panel. Let me start with Essi. What were the big themes that you were able to extract from this particular episode of Solution? Hmm. All right. So <clears throat> let me pick on perhaps three. One would be customer service. Okay. And so looking at how the young lady served and how her boss came in and, you know, intervened. So big issue of customer service, how to manage that, especially on the spot in front of the client. So the damage control bit, I think that's important. Two, emotional intelligence. You know, um, you need to be vigilant. You need to be emotionally intelligent to pick up on what's going on around. So that Kofi, if you're emotionally intelligent and you're in Kofi's shoes, you know when to create physical space when somebody's hitting on you. You know when to end it. You know when to say, okay, this has to be documented. No more verbal agreements, etc." So emotional intelligence and the value of that in here. And one other thing for me was faith and work and the application of faith and work. When faced with uh, somebody who's trying to seduce him, going back to his values, going back to where his, um, his being comes from. And then connecting at that level. For me, those are three things that I picked. I'm sure my colleagues will have more to say. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. Um, Echo, um, anything you can add to that? Or? Well, this is an exciting episode. Um, and I like the, <clears throat> the fact that for, for once, or maybe for a few, you know, the men have uh, been able to withstand <laughs> temptation. <laughs> I, I don't think it was easy because you know that Kofi... Well, for him, he was fortunate enough to sense it early. And even though the lady set the trap and waited for the wife to leave, you know, she had an agenda. And, and those, of, those of you who watched the first episode, when she came in initially with her friend to her solution, she made some suggestive comments. Yeah, about a package. They just laughed over it, yeah. you know. And I think that it comes from a very deep-seated jealousy. Seeing maybe a woman and a man work so lovely together and then maybe she wanting something that Amagana wants. Or something, because eventually when the thing didn't work and Kofi overcame, she went back to say a different story to the friend who is a very loyal and, and you know, an activist of justice. So she wanted to <laughs> go like back it? and, uh, yeah, she wanted to go back and put the record straight. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I like the fact that Kofi was able to tell the wife. And then because of that, she wasn't taken by surprise. And she was actually part of the whole comeback when they met again. And then she was quite, you know, okay with it. And I think she acted very... Uh, she acted with maturity. Mm. Otherwise, she probably would have a, a go at there. But don't forget that that woman is also a client to solutions. You know, so this is quite um, tricky. Because at the end of the day, if you don't play it well, you lose it as a client. And if you don't play it well as well, your name might, you know, go out and then you wouldn't get business from referrals. So, yeah, victory for the men this time. Thank you. <laughs> this time. <laughs> As I'm talking, I hope you haven't said anything wrong. No, <laughs> well, I mean, there, there were quite a few things that one could pick up. I think one of the things I picked up right from the beginning was how um, Madame Kande, mm -hmm. the Wachi seller, had connected to technology mm -hmm. so that her cash flow, they could, they could t give, get the information on her cash flow from WhatsApp you know, her use of WhatsApp to, to, to enable the advice that was given on, I mean, the, whether she should be given a loan or not and how she should handle her money vis-a-vis um, -vis her credits, the way she used credit and other things. I thought that was really good. And later on, we could see the GPS 
uh, the Ghana Post uh, also, yes. you know. So she, you can see that she's really using technology to enhance her business. And I think that's, that's wonderful. And the other thing also that, was, that I, I, I got from this was the importance of watching the pitfalls when you are, you are successful. And Madame Kande said it in a very subtle way to Kofi, I think uh, was his name, yes. to check. And, and, and that's something that I think it's important. When you are, you're successful, you are doing well, it's very easy mixing business with pleasure and all these things. You must stay focused. So I thought that was really good as well and, and, and an important lesson. And you could see that the other lady, the seductress, mm -hmm. um, she had, she was distracted, yeah. you know, because she, she wasn't focusing on her business. She actually left one of her, her very good clients sitting and waiting mm -hmm. because she was on a frolic of her own. Mm -hmm. So that kind, that, that is extremely important um, to, to, to consider. Can I jump on something? Yes, please said, jump in. Jump you know, in. where technology is concerned, a lot of times we tend to think that, oh, technology, it's young people, it's literate people who can only use technology. But where you have someone like um, Mama Kande, Mama Kande mm -hmm. who has allowed herself to be, what's the word, taught, influenced, to understand the value of gathering information. So whether it's basic bookkeeping, whatever it is, and is using it. She doesn't have to be an expert. But appreciating the value, it's something that I find troubling with a lot of SMEs. You're looking for data, and there's no data. We don't gather data in our companies, whether it's HR data, operations. You know, you can ask someone, how much time does it take for this process to go from here to here? What's the gap? They don't know because we don't collect it. So it's really interesting to see that a micro-business you know, is actually doing that, sees the value and the worth. How much more the bigger companies? Because that's where you measure your health. How healthy are we in terms of productivity, performance? How are we doing? Set the benchmark and then, you know, set the baseline. Then each year, each quarter, each month, you are checking to see whether you're improving or not. So the value of data using technology for me is absolutely fantastic. It's important. Thank you very much. Great insights. Uh, Echo, I want to come to you. I think Mama Kande is an inspiration for the thousands of Wache sellers and Yokagari sellers and Banku sellers all around this country, all around the world, uh, especially in Africa. And uh, it's also, you, you made a good point that she has this eagle eye where she's able to spot customer service flaws. But Echo, do you not think that it's time for her to really institutionalize it uh, in such a way that she doesn't have to be there all the time to pick up these things and then fight fires? Sure. Because this is not the first time she's doing this. Well, that's the need for employee development and then the establishment of policies. You know, when you go to these established businesses, big corporates and all that, they, you, you don't just do anything. Everything is documented, like what you need to do, what you can do. And when you do something that you, you are not expected to do, what the, pun the punishments and the penalties are, and even if it's out of the blue and something that ha has never happened, so they don't have, you know, any punishment for it. I mean, they hold you accountable because you're supposed to have common sense. You know, and a violation of common sense is a violation of company policy. It's standard <laughs> everywhere, you know, because if you wouldn't want something done to you, if you were a client, don't do it to our clients. Thanks, Echo. I, I really like the point you made about the breach of common sense being a breach of company policy. It reminds me of the very first rule I had to read in my school book when I was in, in Achimoto school, first year. Every breach of common sense is a breach of school rules. It was drummed into our heads. I guess it apply, applies to business. It applies to life as well. You're watching the Solutions Review Show, and uh, we're looking at issues emanating from this week's episode. And so far, I'm picking up on issues of customer service, the importance of structures in your business, and discipline to make your business not just uh, grow, but flourish as well. You can plug in, let us know exactly what's on your mind with your thoughts, your comments, your ideas, your suggestions. You take your device and do it right now and let us know what's on your mind. Let me come back to my panel. Um, Asantewa, sex and business. This was a theme that was running through. Um, how prevalent is that? And what are the possible impacts of mixing business with pleasure? Yeah, I think um, with the current Me Too trend, you do know that it's very prevalent. And it's something that we know happens a lot. But that's why it's important to have 
sexual harassment policies in place. Um, that's why it's important, you talked about discipline, to have that. Um, you would see in the discussion or, or in, 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 in the, in, the episode, in yeah. the episode yeah. that we watched that there, were, there was openness, trust um, in this relationship. It was a family relationship, but you also expect the same thing in a company. There must be disclosure if there's something that is going on that is not right. And you must go according to the book and deal with, with what needs to be done according to the, the sexual harassment policies that you have. It happens. And so you must prevent it and put in place the, the safeguards that would prevent it from happening. Essie, I want you to put on your, your HR glasses and analyze this relationship for me. But from the beginning, Ama and uh, Kofi seem to love flaunting their relationship in public. And uh, for some people, it's no big deal. Others, it's a bit of a problem. I mean, where does the relationship stop? And uh, I mean, where does the emotional lovey-dovey thing stop and then the business side begin? I think when it becomes a distraction, then we have a problem. In this case, and in some cases, it's almost a necessity to kind of mark your territory when you realize that, you know, this is a client who's getting a little too close, etc. So some people may need to just, you know, marking the territory and then mm -hmm. leaving it. But even then, you don't do it from an emotive standpoint. It's a very systems... I would have a very systems orientation towards it. Clients come, this is where we sit, this is the space, this is the table, you know, just even the physical setup. Mark it up. Now, clearly. yeah. Now, on the other hand, if you look beyond that, I think as Nana's mentioned, making sure that you have policies, et cetera, et cetera, but you need to make sure it doesn't become a distraction. If we're having a conversation with a client, and we're sitting there and we're all over each other. At the end of the day, it's a distraction. We're sitting here to do business. So the moment it crosses the line and it becomes something that gets in the way of the business, the substance of the moment, then we've gone too far. Okay. Echo, um, I see you nodding. Um, with the help station, do you, do you have a lot of, of family or man and woman, man, woman, couple run businesses coming in there? And uh, any kind of special advice you give to them? Well, Quite a few, not that many. But even with that, we have one person that represents the company and comes for the meetings. We, have, we hardly have both man and woman because normally, you know, with this man and woman business, one has to stay, make sure things are going when one, you know, goes around. So, um, but even with what um, AC was saying, what would you do if your employees also start modeling lovey-dovey things in your business, you know? So maybe their boyfriend or husband comes to visit him during work hours and they're all over the place, touching each other, holding each other. Because it has to do with examples mm -hmm. and then building the company culture as you would want it, you know? And for a company that provides solutions to other companies, you would want them to read from your actions even more than what you tell them. And as it is, people learn from what they see. But Another thing that I took from this episode that we haven't really touched on is where people think they need money or they need a loan when the business starts to take off. <clears throat> That's where I want to look at. You know, when um, um, Amma came back to the health station to find out the state of business for their, the state of engagement for some of her clients. And then when Mama Kandi's issue came up and then the health station was able to analyze the records of Mama Kande to be able to determine that she doesn't need a loan. All she needs is to tweak some things and then even know the market that she's in and which of the products change and which of the products don't change and where she should, you know, and even how she can have a certain relationship where she has suppliers credits, you know, so that she doesn't need fiscal money. And this is one of the things that I want to advise a lot of businesses out there. You don't, loans should be probably your last. You know, loans are given to people who can afford it. It's not people who need it, like who can't afford it. You know, and that's why the rich keep getting richer. Because you see, one of the things that the banks look out for, and also we look out for, even though we're an SME bank, is that it is easier to give you a loan when you have some cash sitting there. Cash collateral is always quick. Any bank will not spend more than 12 hours, at most 24 hours, to make a decision on whether to give you a loan or not when you have cash sitting there. You know, but this is the orientation that a lot of businesses don't get. If you're in business, you deal with products and services that bring you money. Whenever you get the money, lock some aside in some sort of a fixed deposit so that anytime you need help, you can negotiate to the bank. Insightful stuff, eh? deep, yeah. I told you it was a power-packed panel. 
And I'd like to hear from you. Take out your devices, plug in, let us know exactly what's on your mind. Asantewa, um, you were going to say something before I jumped in, and then let me have that and tell me a little bit about your organization and what you do there. Okay, so I was going to say professionalism is the key word. It's important. It doesn't matter if you're a family business, a non-profit organization, whatever it is you're doing, you, ha you may have the passion, but you must be professional about it. And I, I just wanted to link it to the way um, the lady reacted even after her husband had informed her, Amma. yes, dealing with the clients, she mm -hmm. met them and the way she reacted yes. was really professional. So that, that I think um, is important. And actually for WAXI, which is the West Africa Civil Society Institute, we work with non-profit organizations, civil society organizations who are very passionate about what they do. They have their missions, they want to change the world, but we, 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 we work with them to make them effective and efficient in doing that. So we work, uh, we look at the professionalism also of civil society organizations, working with their passion to achieve their mission because we believe they make more impact that way. Sounds great. Now, Essie, uh, tell us about what you do at Ashesi. You are a multitasker, I hear. <laughs> I hear. I wear many hats. Okay. So one for the last almost 10 years, I've been teaching at Ashesi. And my courses range from HR, organizational behavior, negotiation. But in the last four years, they're about, I focused mainly on leadership. So I teach leadership. Um, the other hat I wear is Axis. And we mentioned that earlier. And SME, we focus on HR solutions, you know, really. Uh, recruitment, training, advice, OD and stuff. Another hat that I what wear. Is what is OD? Is organizational what is development. I thought it was the guy, the bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, organizational development. Yes. All right, good. <laughs> the other thing that I do, which has taken up um, a place of prominence in my life, is I have an NGO um, that focuses on senior citizens, the elderly. Okay. And so working to, it's a membership-based organization where we're doing advocacy. We're also looking at helping them to become, you know, to stay engaged because there are issues that, you know, Loneliness, social exclusion, we have a pension fund that doesn't help. We have, we have issues, you know, so just advocacy and working with senior citizens. Yeah. Those are three. There are many others. but More hats. <laughs> Thank you very much for, yeah. for telling us what you do. A little bit of it, which is a lot. Um, Echo, why should somebody be excited about Help Station and, and what they're doing with Well, I, you know, starting a business is not an easy decision. Growing a business... Is even more difficult, you know, because when you get your when you get your business to a point where you are used to how the dynamics of the business is, and then suddenly you realize that now you have to increase your employees because now the demand is more. You have to open some branches because inquiries are coming from different places and all that. So you realize that sometimes when people succeed in starting, it is the growth stage that is difficult. And when they are not able to manage the growth stage, as Mama Kande is experiencing now, they tend to actually go back instead of going forward. Now, working with the help station, th these are some of the things that we help you figure out. First of all, we help you to analyze your business processes first to make sure that you're not wasting resources. You are not um, going into diversifying unnecessarily, you know, because I think there's this whole craze about group of company now. And everybody wants to have, I don't know why, everybody seems to, I mean, uh, want to have some sort of a group of company. And sometimes people come to us and all they have are business units, but then they call the business units different names. It must be a founder. And then, you know, the guy's better, I guess. it's just, it's just, <laughs> they just, you know, the same resources, mm. less money sometimes. And then they are just, you know, it's, it's pure waste because sometimes you can bring all these things together reduce your manpower, reduce your, you know, cost of operations and still have the, the results you want, you know, and still, you know, but so these are some of the things that we do at the help station. We give you professional business advice in partnership with organizations like, and we, I'm, ho I'm hoping to work with her as well. So one thing I wanted us to talk about before we end <clears throat> is the role of Aquili. This is an employee who's on leave. She's not physically in the office. But she's concerned. So she's calling her bosses to find out how are things going? Are you okay? These are the kinds of employees we need, you know, where they don't just, they are not the ones who come, they check in and before it's 5 p.m., 4 o'clock, they start packing their things and by 4.59, night, they're out of the mm -hmm. door. But this is somebody who takes the business to heart. And so she might be home doing whatever 
but she's concerned. She's checking in. These are the kinds of people. We're not saying you should be a workaholic to the point where you're home with family and you're still working and you're sacrificing, <laughs> you know. But it's important to have people who have the right attitude. So when you're hiring, don't just look for the technical competence. Mm -hmm. You look at the attitude. You look at the kind of orientation the person has. That makes all the difference. Thank you. I told you it was a power-packed panel. Thanks to Essi and Echo and Nana Asantewa. And thanks to you for watching. It's amazing how much you can distill from a 30-minute a show. You know, the customer service, professionalism, structures, discipline, emotional intelligence. Yeah, that's your solutions review show. It's here. We fix things. We are out for now. Thank you very much. My name is Kafui. God bless. Hey, cheers. <laughs>